Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to the P-Hispanic experience. Uh, let me introduce our partners, um, Meritza Use, Andres Trust, and myself, Carolina Lecampo. I'm normally working international tax uh, transfer pricing and dispute resolution. Let's start with uh, our first case. It is in those cases where we have a subsidiary in Spain and um, and, and the tax authorities normally may take the, the approach to either search for a permanent establishment or maybe go for the transfer pricing of the subsidiary. Um, in those cases, normally a Spanish tax authority has traditionally uh, gone through the first path, which means that, uh, and, and it's based normally on court decisions um, confirming the existence of a permanent establishment, either through a fixed place of business or dependent agent, or the new Spanish, what the, it's been called the Spanish approach, which is uh, they take a look at all the activities performed by the uh, non-resident um, entity, also the activities performed by the subsidiaries, and if adding all the activities that, that have been done. And finally, they can conclude that they are performing the, the core business in Spain. They would have what they call the um, a complex operational establishment. So um, in those cases, we would have a permanent establishment. This is a very similar concept to the one that we have in the MLI in Article 5, Paragraph 4.1. Although in Spain has been applying that, that concept for the last 10 years and um, they have confirmed that they will continue applying it even if the treaties do not reflect the new Article 5. So what do we do in those cases? Uh, in those cases, you may have the option to go to court with the problems with elimination of double taxation or you may go to MAP. If you go to MAP, um, what, what it normally happens is that in Spain, you do have two different competent authorities. One competent authority dealing with the temp interpretation of the treaty. So that will be the one that you have to go and start the DTA, a map, DTA map. Um, regarding the concept of the permanent establishment, once you finish that, if they confirm that there is a permanent establishment, then you need to go back to the other competent authority to start a new MAP on transfer pricing. So. As you can see, it's a long process and you will have to deal with two different competent authorities and maybe two different procedures. The other option, as I was saying, is to go through the transfer pricing and um, transfer pricing on the subsidiary. So the discussion there is very much focused. And if you're going through that situation, then you will need to go um, either to courts in case and with the problem with the elimination of double taxation, and the other option is to go to MAP, but in that case, you only face one competent authorities, one procedure, and it's a much faster um, solution. So um, if you are facing that situation where you might uh, see that you may fall within the scope of the definition of permanent establishment, considering what the Spanish approach is, just our advice is try to review it I was thinking trying to avoid the dispute resolution um, situation when you are facing a permanent establishment and the two different procedures. So let's continue maybe with uh, the, the next the next case, the next experience, Andreas. Okay, thank you, Carolina. Uh, as Carolina mentioned, uh, in Spain, we have been uh, quite early adopters of, uh, say, aggressive theories with, with permanent establishment situations. Uh, large multinational groups uh, can tell you stories about this, and we have court cases about this. Um, and this is a question that is also looming for private equity funds. Although the good news here is that uh, those uh, private equity investments are not yet in the focus of, of the Spanish tax authorities. So what we usually see is uh, private equity houses with uh, individuals on the ground in Spain that seek for investments, uh, due diligence, uh, purchase uh, assets or companies, manage them, and then in the end uh, also or, or organize the exit. And uh, the, these individuals are usually extremely capable individuals and uh, have a, a high degree of, of involvement. And obviously the point that uh, arises there is whether the activity of these individuals and the, 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 the intensity of the involvement and their capability to represent the, the fund or the relevant SPV 
may, may cause a permanent establishment of, of the man core or, or maybe even of, of, the, of the fund itself. Um, uh, this obviously would uh, be uh, quite an issue. Uh, it, it, it's not the same whether we are talking about a share deal with an exit with no taxation in Spain or whether we are talking about an asset deal where we have an exit with, with Spanish corporate income tax. But um, certainly there, there is a risk uh, that will depend on what these people do and uh, the kind of powers they have. It's not the same whether they have a full-fledged power of attorney for everything or they operate on the basis of, of proxies. And uh, what we also see sometimes is that there's not really a proper setup in Spain. So we just have these uh, extremely capable professionals on the ground doing what they have to do, but there, there's no legal entity in Spain, uh, there, there's nothing. And this is something that uh, one should address because uh, in the absence of such a proper setup, we indeed have this risk of allocation to, to the fund of, of the profits or a part of the profits and the safeguards uh, would actually be quite easy. Set up a Spanish entity, preferably a limited liability company, uh, set up a framework of agreements uh, that uh, specifically details what uh, these people do in Spain, why they do it, how they do it, uh, who instructs them, uh, set up workflows uh, that um, enable you to show how things are managed and enable you to prove that uh, key decisions, uh, investment decisions, uh, disinvestment decisions are actually taken uh, by the Manco or by the fund itself and ensure that there's a proper remuneration uh, that uh, complies with transfer pricing guidelines and is, uh, say, on the generous side uh, in order not to wake the, the appetite of the Spanish tax authorities because uh, one thing that you definitely do not want in a private equity investment is to have a lengthy discussion in Spanish courts for, say, five, seven, eight years uh, that may even exceed the average lifespan of a Spanish equity, a private equity fund. So basically the idea is put those safeguards in place and uh, if you play it reasonably conservative you could have a, a acceptable degree of, of peace of mind and well i hand over the word to Mary Clay because uh, we still have some vat issues for you thank you andreas thank you i just uh, in the in the our last two minutes I just wanted to address uh, two, two relevant topics, two practical topics regarding the fixed establishment in Spain. Please note, as you may, may know, that it's not the same exactly concept. The fixed establishment for BAT purposes is not exactly the same concept than permanent establishment. First, uh, I wanted to mention a resolution from the Spanish Super Court that concluded that a Spanish subsidiary of a foreign parent company could be considered, and in this case was considered, the, as a fixed establishment for the parent company in Spain. The conclusion was based on the facts that the Spanish subsidiary did not have any autonomy, was totally dependent on, on, the, on the parent company and was fully controlled by it. Briefly, the effects of this conclusion were uh, that the parent company should have charged VAT, Spanish VAT, you know, the transactions carried out in Spain instead of applying the VAT reverse charge rules. So uh, it resulted in a huge debt to the Spanish tax authority for VAT. So be, the advice is be careful with these structures and be careful on what is the, how is the subsidiary working in the, on behalf of the parent company. And another practical issue we've seen that it's quite relevant for VAT purposes is the owing real estate, uh, leasing real estate in Spain when the investor, especially when the investor is non-EU is um, non-EU uh, investor and is acquiring uh, retail, hotel, offices. In some scenarios, it will be advisable to, to force this fixed establishment to have this permanent human and technical resources because uh, this way uh, we will be able to pay VAT that it will be recoverable instead of transfer tax. So the advice is be careful with these uh, investments of foreign, uh, of foreign investors for uh, real estate leasing. 
So thank you very much uh, for joining this uh, room. We will be just be placed uh, again to the general uh, main room. Uh, it's a very short, but we've tried to do it no? practical. So please do not hesitate to contact us if you have any doubt. Thank you and bye-bye.